The transfer portal is getting crazier and crazier. It's pretty much at the point where it doesn't matter what your recruiting class looks like anymore. What matters is how your transfer class looks. There was a lot of movement this offseason, but these are the five programs that absolutely killed it in the transfer portal. Before we get to today's video, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications if you're new to my channel. If you're watching this video, odds are you love college football, and odds are you aren't subscribed to my channel. So so make sure to subscribe to one of the best college football communities here on YouTube. It's no surprise that Colorado killed it once again in the portal this offseason. Although they lost some key talent, they picked up some pretty solid talents as well. They improved their wide receiver room by adding former Vanderbilt wide receiver Will Shepard. Over the last three seasons for the Commodores, he caught 150 passes for over 2,000 yards with 21 receiving touchdowns. Another wide receiver they added was former Florida Atlantic wide receiver Lejante Wester. In 2023, he was one of the more underrated wide receivers in all of college football. He caught over 100 passes for nearly 1,200 yards and 8 touchdowns. During his time with the Owls, Wester caught over 250 passes for 2,700 yards and 21 touchdowns. Colorado also added his brother Jalen Wester. The linebacker has 111 tackles over the last two seasons. He had 12 tackles for loss with two sacks to go along with one interception, a forced fumble, and three pass breakups. Cornerback Preston Hodge came over from Liberty where he was the top defensive player on a team that went undefeated during the regular season. He made 48 tackles in 2023 and had two interceptions, a forced fumble, and eight pass breakups. Linebacker Keaton Wade came over for Kentucky. Last season for the Wildcats, he had 35 tackles with three tackles for loss. Defensive lineman Chidozi Nwankwo came over from Houston. During his time with the Cougars, he racked up 94 tackles with 11 tackles for loss and three sacks. Another defensive lineman they added was Pittsburgh's Samuel Okanlola. He had only 18 tackles last season, but he made them count as he had 6 tackles for loss and 5 sacks. Probably the best defensive lineman Colorado added was former Arizona State defensive lineman BJ Green. This past season for my Sun Devils, he had 40 tackles with 11 and a half of them coming for loss. He also added 6 sacks and had a forced fumble. Another really solid piece Colorado added to their defensive line was former Pitt defensive lineman Dayon Hayes. Last season for the Panthers, he had 45 tackles, 10 and a half tackles for loss, 4 sacks, 4 pass breakups, and a forced fumble. Former Oklahoma State cornerback DJ McKinney had a breakout campaign last year with the Cowboys. In his first year as a starter, he had 38 tackles with 5 pass breakups. Linebacker Nakai Hill Green spent last season at Charlotte after two years at Michigan. Last year was by far the best season of his career as he finished with 73 tackles, 9 tackles for loss, 2 sacks, 3 pass breakups, and a forced fumble. We'll switch things back over to offense as they brought in former Ohio State running back Dallin Hayden. He had only 19 carries last season, but in 2022 was one of the top offensive weapons for the Buckeyes when he finished with over 500 rushing yards and 5 rushing scores. The Buffs also added another running back and former Miami of Ohio running back Rashad Amos. He was a beast last season as he ran for over a thousand yards and had 13 rushing touchdowns. Most importantly, Colorado beefed up their offensive line, which was one of the worst in all of college football last season. They added Philip Houston from Florida International, Peyton Kirkland from Texas, Wyatt Hamel from Villanova, Zachariah Owens from Clemson, and Ethan Boyd from Michigan State. You likely wouldn't have guessed it, but Louisville did very well in the portal this offseason. We'll start at the most important position, quarterback, as they added former Texas Tech and Oregon quarterback Tyler Shuck. During his collegiate career, he's thrown for nearly 5,000 yards with 36 passing touchdowns. They improved their wide receiver room as well, as they added former Alabama wide receiver Ja'Cory Brooks. He didn't really do anything last season for the Tide, but in 2022, he caught 40 passes for nearly 700 yards with 8 receiving touchdowns. They also added another wide receiver in former South Alabama wide receiver Colin Colin Lacey. He had quite the career at South Alabama as he caught over 200 passes for 2,500 yards and 13 touchdowns. He's coming off the best season of his collegiate career as he finished with 91 catches for 1,300 yards and 7 touchdowns last year. Cornerback Corey Thornton transferred from UCF. During his time with the Golden Knights, he racked up 140 tackles, had 4 interceptions, and had 24 pass breakups. Just over the last two seasons alone, he has 16 pass breakups. Defensive 
lineman Jordan Gurad had 72 tackles, including 12.5 tackles for loss and 5 sacks during his last two seasons at Florida International. Louisville beefed up their running back room this offseason. Their biggest ad was former Toledo running back Penny Boone. This past season for the Rockets, he ran for 1,400 yards and had 15 rushing touchdowns. His 7.2 yards per carry were the 5th best mark in all of college football last season. They also added former Miami running back Donald Chaney Jr. This past season for the Hurricanes, he ran for 500 yards and had 2 scores. Former Tennessee and Georgia Tech safety Wesley Walker has quite the experience. Over his 5 collegiate seasons, he's totaled nearly 200 tackles with 11 tackles for loss, an interception, 3 forced fumbles, and 12 pass breakups. Another former Tennessee player heading to Louisville is safety Tamarian McDonald. Over his last two seasons, he's totaled nearly 70 tackles with 7.5 tackles for loss, 3 interceptions, a fumble recovery, and 10 pass breakups. We have room for one more Tennessee player in edge rusher Tyler Barron. He had 101 tackles, 27 tackles for loss, and 13 and a half sacks during his time at Tennessee. They added Illinois defensive back Tavion Nicholson, who had 66 tackles and 14 pass breakups during his time with Illinois. After spending five seasons in Middle Tennessee State, edge rusher Richard Kinley had 81 tackles, 14 and a half tackles for loss, six and a half sacks, and five pass breakups. Finally, they added South Florida edge rusher. Tramel Logan. During his time with USF, he had 91 tackles with 15 and a half tackles for loss and 9 pass breakups. The next team on our list is Ole Miss, who once again had a great offseason with the transfer portal. Linebacker Chris Paul Jr. comes over from Arkansas. Over the last two seasons, he accounted for 136 tackles, 15 tackles for loss, and 6 sacks. Staying on defense, former Indiana safety Luis Moore is coming off an incredible campaign. In 2023, he had 82 tackles with 3 interceptions, three forced fumbles, and a pass breakup. They also added another safety in former Tennessee and Oklahoma safety, Key Lawrence. During his career, he has 150 tackles with 10 tackles for loss, three interceptions, six forced fumbles, and 13 pass breakups. One of the better defensive linemen in the portal was Princely Imami Allen, who comes over from Florida. Over the last two seasons for the Gators, he had 78 tackles with 21 tackles for loss and 11 and a half sacks. One more defensive lineman they added was from Texas A&M in Walter Nolan. He had 66 tackles over the last two seasons, including 11 tackles for loss and 5 sacks. Cornerback Yam Banks comes over from South Alabama after spending 4 seasons there. He totaled 150 tackles and had 16 tackles for loss. Banks also had 7 interceptions and 16 pass breakups. Cornerback Trey Amos was at Alabama for only one season after he spent 3 at Louisiana. Last year for the Tide, he had 5 pass breakups. Overall for his career, he has 71 tackles and 18 pass breakups. The final defensive player added was former Houston cornerback Isaiah Hamilton. Last season for the Cougars, he had 50 tackles, 4 interceptions, 4 pass breakups, and a forced fumble. Moving over to offense, we have wide receiver Juice Wells, who comes over from South Carolina. He didn't really see the field at all in 2023, as he had only 3 receptions. But in 2022, he was one of the best wide receivers in the entire SEC. He caught 68 passes for just under 1,000 yards, and had 6 receiving touchdowns. After Losing one of the best running backs in all of college football, Ole Miss had to add some talent to the running back room, and they did just that. They brought in former LSU and Notre Dame running back Logan Diggs. Over the last three seasons, Diggs has rushed for 1,700 yards with 14 rushing touchdowns. He's also added 24 receptions for 350 yards and 3 receiving scores. They also added former New Mexico running back Ja'Cory Merritt. Last season, he ran for 1,200 yards and had 17 rushing touchdowns which was top 5 in all of college football. The final running back added was Henry Paris Jr., who returns to Ole Miss after spending two seasons with Miami. Over his collegiate career, he's ran for over 2,000 yards with 15 rushing touchdowns. He's also caught 56 passes for 400 receiving yards and 2 receiving touchdowns. Texas is moving to the SEC, which was a big sell for them in the portal this offseason. They did a great job adding some weapons for quarterback Quinn Ewers. They added former Houston wide receiver Matthew Golden, who has caught 76 passes for 1,000 yards and 13 touchdowns over the last two seasons. Another wide receiver they brought in was Isaiah Bond from Alabama. 
This past season for the Tide, he caught 50 passes for 700 yards and 4 touchdowns. The final wide receiver that Texas added was former Oregon State wide receiver Silas Bolden. Last season for the Beavers, he caught 54 passes for 750 yards and 5 touchdowns. The final weapon they added on offense was former Alabama tight end Amare Nyblack. He had 20 catches last season for over 300 yards and 4 receiving touchdowns. We'll switch over to defense and start with probably the best defensive player who was in the portal in former UTSA edge rusher Trey Moore. Over the last two seasons, Moore has over 100 tackles with 35 and a half tackles for loss and 22 sacks. He's also added 9 pass breakups and 3 forced fumbles as well. Up next is former Clemson cornerback Andrew Makuba. During his time with the Tigers, he had 140 tackles with 16 pass breakups. Cornerback JV on Cole was one of the top defensive players in the Mountain West while at San Jose State. Last season, he had 38 tackles with 3 interceptions and 10 pass breakups. Their final player is defensive lineman Jermaine Lowell, who has been around for quite some time. He first suited up for Arizona State all the way back in 2018. He spent 4 years at ASU and has spent the last 2 years at Louisville. Over his collegiate career, he's totaled 140 tackles, 25 tackles for loss, 12 and a half sacks, 10 and pass breakups and three forced fumbles. The final team on today's video is Florida State. We'll start with their most important addition in former Clemson and Oregon State quarterback DJ Uwe Angelale. He hasn't quite lived up to the expectations since he was a top quarterback recruit, but he is coming off the best season of his collegiate career. I talked about this the other day, but former Colorado cornerback Omarion Cooper transferred back to FSU after spending one season with the Buffaloes. He was with the Knowles for two seasons before he transferred last off season. After spending time at UCF and Miami, cornerback Devontae Brown is trying to end up at every Florida program. He spent time at UCF in Miami and now with Florida State. During his career, he's totaled 96 tackles, 3 interceptions, and 18 pass breakups. Former Colorado State defensive lineman Grady Kelly comes over after 80 tackles, 9 tackles for loss, 3 sacks, and 2 pass breakups over his last 2 years with the Rams. Another Oregon State player added was defensive lineman Sione Lolohe. During his career with the Beavers, he had 88 tackles with 15 tackles for loss, 4 sacks, and 4 forced fumbles. Florida State also improved their offensive line by adding Terrence Ferguson, who was at Alabama. He was one of the top offensive lineman recruits coming out of high school, but he didn't see a whole lot of action while with the tied. This past season, he played in a little over 100 snaps for Alabama. They also added former Harvard offensive lineman Jacob Rizzi. Last season for the Crimson, he was first team all Ivy League. Trying to improve their running back room, Indiana running back Jalen Lucas comes over and has over 500 yards and 4 touchdowns along with 50 receptions for 300 yards under his belt. Another running back they added was former Alabama running back Roy Dell Williams. During his career with the Tide, he ran for nearly 1,200 yards and had 11 rushing touchdowns. Some other notable players added, though they really don't have much experience, are Georgia edge rusher Marvin Jones Jr., Alabama cornerback Earl Jones Jr., and LSU wide receiver Jalen Brown. Well, that wraps it up for today's video. Which school do you think did the best in the transfer portal this offseason? Whoever it was, let me know in the comments down below. Also, was there a team who killed it that wasn't included in today's video? If there's a team whose transfer portal class deserves to be talked about, drop a comment below and I'll feature them in my next video. Before you leave, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications if you're new to my channel. I'm posting college football videos all off season, so make sure to subscribe so you never miss a video. Also, don't forget to drop a like on this video as well. It helps out with that YouTube algorithm and helps share the video with more college football fans. Plus, it only takes a second to do. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.